The big news out of Washington today, judges are considering whether Donald Trump should be granted presidential immunity for possible crimes he committed while in office. Early today, I spoke with our Washington correspondent, Molly Martinez. Get the details on this and other major headlines coming out of our nation's capital. Molly, can you catch us up to speed on the former president's immunity case? Hey, Maria, great to see you. So a three-panel judge today heard arguments today surrounding the former president's potential immunity in crime stemming from the 2020 election. And this is a big deal because their decision could determine if Trump will be tried in any of these federal election cases. Now, lawyers for Trump say that he shouldn't be prosecuted We're for trying to change the election to results the because it was his duty as president to protect the election integrity. Trump himself did not testify in court, but he did give a statement afterwards doubling down on his belief that he himself should be immune. Now, whether or not this flies with the judges remains to be seen. Uh, one of the judges called this logic, quote, paradoxical. As for voters, a January poll by CBS and YouGov found that 64% of those polled do not believe that Trump should have presidential immunity for his alleged crimes. And an opinion from the D.C. appellate court is expected soon. Uh, looking forward, whichever side loses, we're expecting them to immediately file an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. And speaking of Trump, the Iowa caucus is coming up in a few days, and he's still holding that runaway lead. What are polls telling us? That's right, Maria. So the Iowa caucus happens on Monday, and it is a winner-take-all format. And as you mentioned, he's got quite a big lead right now, according to 538. Uh, it shows that Donald Trump is polling at 61% in the national average. To give you an idea of how big of a lead that is, the number two closest candidate is DeSantis, and he's polling at 12%, and Nikki Haley is number three, and she's coming in around 11%. But Iowa is known for its surprises. Think Rick Santorum winning in 2012 or Ted Cruz winning in 2016. It's not necessarily indicative of who the party pick will be based off who wins Iowa. The result of Iowa, though, will be telling. It's going to tell us things like whether or not Nikki Haley's ground efforts these past few weeks have paid off, that huge money dump she did in the state, whether that gained her any footing. We're also going to see sort of a pulse check of the DeSantis campaign and whether or not he'll be able to survive upcoming caucuses, including the one that happens exactly one week after Iowa, and that is New Hampshire. New Hampshire tends to favor more moderate candidates like Nikki Haley uh, and like Chris Christie. So uh, there's going to be a lot to glean from whatever comes out of Iowa. And a lot of commotion this week in Washington over Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's hospitalization, mainly the fact that he didn't tell anyone at the time, none of the nation's leaders. What is the fallout from that? So, Maria, some are calling this a scandal because, as you mentioned, uh, people weren't privy to what was happening, including President Biden. Lloyd was hospitalized for complications surrounding a prostate cancer diagnosis back in December. But President Biden did not know that he was hospitalized until last week, and he didn't know that it was because of cancer until today. So this is problematic because nobody really knew who was at the helm of our national security while Lloyd was out. The Department of Defense says that they're now going to give daily updates on Lloyd's condition, and they're also going to do a 30-day look back to sort of prevent lapses in communication with top brass going forward. Uh, President Biden says that he's spoken with Lloyd, and they plan on keeping him on board at least until the end of his term. And finally, um, Congress is back from the holidays. Some members are announcing they're not going to seek re-election. Who's throwing in the towel at this time? So we know that Doug Lamborn, who is a Republican out of Colorado, is not going to run for re-election. And this is a big deal because he is a nine-term incumbent. And this also means that all three Republican seats in Colorado are now in flux. Ken Buck's seat, he's not going to run again. And Lauren Boebert's seat, she's going to run for Ken Buck's seat, leaving her seat vacant. Basically, this means that there's a lot of commotion, and it could mean very consequential things for the very slim majority that the House Republicans have right now. Uh, I spoke to one expert at Cook Political sort of to get an idea of, of where this is heading. She says it's too early to tell right now, but a lot of it is going to be predicated on uh, newly minted Speaker Johnson's leadership and whether or not he can unite the party and whether or not people will reinvest trust in the Republican Party. Molly, thank you so much for that update. Molly Martinez from our Washington News Bureau.